Hello and today we're going to have a look at removing the carburetors on an XJ900 diversion. So first of all unlock the seat, take the seat completely off the bike and then we're going to set about removing the tank. So we undo this main bolt at the base of the tank, remove the little rubber cover and then go to the front of the tank and it's a little 8mm screw that we need to undo at the front. Then we can get under the tank and turn off the fuel tap. You'll find it underneath the belly of the tank uh, and just rotate it anti-clockwise like that. Once the fuel tap's turned off, you can remove the main fuel hose. So there's a clip just behind the tap and you just wiggle that off. And then our fuel is disconnected. You might get a little bit of fuel flowing back from the filter. Then we have the electrical connection for the uh, fuel gauge, it's green, so it's just a press clip, so you can press that and pull that off as well. The only other thing on the tank now is the drain hose, which if you go around the left side of the bike and just pull that out from where it goes through the back of the swing arm, so it doesn't get caught on anything when you lift the tank. We can then lift the tank, it's much easier if you've drained the tank, make, uh, it's less likely to um, damage anything. It's quite heavy when it's full. So lift it up from the back and just very carefully pull it out, put it down on somewhere soft. Now we can see the air box, which takes up the whole underside of the tank. There's a little Allen screw at the front, which you can undo to release the air box. Then we need to disconnect the carburetors from the airbox. Um, there's four screws at the top of the rubber boots on the carburetor and once you've undone that you can pull the airbox off. There's some little rubber like gusset things that go inside the airbox so you need to wiggle it around a little bit to pull them free of the uh, airbox holes. Now once you've got the airbox up a little bit you'll find there's a couple of tubes underneath the front. Um, which we need to disconnect. So there's this big one here, we're going to pull that down and then if you go around the other side you'll see there's also another one. So that's the big one at the front that goes onto that hole and then there's this smaller one. We can then lift it free, pull the hose off the back, we can then pull these little rubber inlets off, just wobble them a little bit and they'll come unclipped. Okay, so having done that, we need to undo the um, the two cables that connect the throttle to the carburetors. So just loosen off the lock nuts for both of them and just pull them out of the little holder. And we'll just leave them there for now. They're easier to get them off once you've got the carburetors off. Now on the left hand side at the back of the carburetors there's a, a screw that holds the choke cable in place. So you just loosen that a little bit, pull it out and then you can unhook the cable from the plastic slide and just put that aside. Now we can undo the fuel hose from the bottom of the carburetor so pull the clip down with some pliers and just wiggle that off. And sorry the camera went out of view there. Okay, now we're going to undo the uh, clamps that hold the carburetors to the manifolds. So you need a long screwdriver to get into the um, four clamps and you need to push, them, push the screwdriver in behind the um, carburetor. So it's a little difficult at times, you've got to get your eye down there and have a look where the screw is. And sometimes it's better to put your hand in from the top and you can feel the head of the screwdriver is connecting to the screw. 
So if you go to the top there and have a look down, you may be able to see the heads of the screws. Sometimes they're on top, sometimes they're underneath. Um, so we need to undo all of those first. So you can see there the screwdriver going in and you might have to use your other hand to hold the clamp to stop it from spinning around um, while you're unscrewing it. Then you can lever the carburetor out against the frame just by using a screwdriver and just gently pulling it up like that and it'll come loose. Now it's easier to get to this throttle position sensor if you pull the carburetor up a little bit and then you can see it easier. So we'll go back to that on the left hand side and just and then you can pull that out. Okay so there's one more electrical connection just underneath the uh, bottom of the carburetor. There's a little white plug so if you just tip the carburetors forward, you'll see down here there's a short wire with a little plug on it. So we need to un unclip that as well. There it is there. And all we need to do now is remove the two throttle cables. So you can carefully tip the carburetor over and you can see where one of them goes in from the back and flip it over the other way and you usually have to hold the spring down the return spring like that and then that will expose the, the little slot where the, the cable goes in and we can get that off as well Okay, once you've got the carburetors off, you need to drain the petrol out before you do anything else. So if you just tip them over um, a container, you can drain them through the overflow holes at the top. And this will make it a lot easier when you've got it on the bench because you don't want fuel just going everywhere. And there's quite a big quantity in them. So give them a good shake. Try and get as much out as you can before we go on to the next part. Okay, we've got our carburetors on the bench and we can start to disassemble them now. So normally you flip them over so the float bowls are facing you or the bottom of the carburetor. Um, and then we'll see, we can see everything. So we need to undo the float bowl screws and if they haven't been undone for a long time they're, they're going to be quite hard. So sometimes you need to use an impact driver to undo the four screws on each bowl. Okay, now we've got the bolts off, we can start removing the components from the bottom of the carburetor. So the first thing is to remove the float, so you'll need to undo this screw here, which will release the pin that's holding the float in, and just gently lift that out. And underneath you can see the float valve, which is just hanging from the little clip. So we take that out, and now we have access to the various jets. But before we remove the jets, we're going to undo the float valve seat. So you undo the little retaining screw here, because quite often the O-rings have perished on this Uh, sometimes the rubber just turns to jelly so if you can just get some long nose pliers and we're going to um, just gently pry that out 
and you can see the little filter there which you can clean and also that o-ring make sure that's in good condition or just replace it um, because it'll cause a lot of trouble with the fuel uh, level getting too high and overflowing into the motor and now we can take out all the jets and of course all of these will need a good clean as well as all the passageways inside the carburetor and repeat the process for the other three carburetors okay once we've got all the bowls off we can now start to remove all the jets Now you'll notice when I took this mixture screw out that the little o-ring is missing from the bottom of it so that's still down in the in the hole so be very careful that you don't misplace it so shake it out before you and put it back on the end of the screw before you put it back in. and remove the mixture screw now what I'm going to do is to polish the uh, float valve seat um, sometimes you can get corrosion in there which will give it a bad seal so a little bit of metal polish on the end of a um, little uh, cotton bud and just mount it in a drill and we just cake each one of them and just use the cotton bud to give it a little bit of a polish in the bottom of that seat um, and this will help it seal Okay, we flipped the carburetors over now and we're going to remove the um, diaphragms and check the um, condition of the rubbers. So just take the top caps off, make a note of the different brackets and things that are on each one because they're all quite different. It'll be very confusing to get them all back the same. So there we have the diaphragm spring. And if you just gently pull out the diaphragm and the slide and the needle valve on the bottom. Check that the rubbers don't have any holes in them or any creases that might prevent them from working properly. 
Uh, also take note there's a little o-ring just here that you need to put back in when you reassemble. So when you're putting the diaphragm back in, just be careful with the needle valve that it goes down into the um, slide correctly. Don't put a lot of force on it. Make sure the little edges of the diaphragm are sitting neatly in the groove. As I said before, make sure that little o-ring is there. Then you can put the spring in. Make sure the spring sits into the cap correctly and pop it all back together. and secure any brackets exactly how they were before. So always take a note of where they came from. Okay, before putting the carburetors back on, we want to make sure that all the little cables and everything are out of the way and that all the clamps are lined up correctly. So there's a little notch in each of those manifolds just make sure that the um, clamps are sitting correctly on those notches. You might tighten it up a tiny bit so they can't rotate too far. Um, but you don't want to over tighten them because it's a very tight fit to get the carburetors back into these, these rubbers. So line everything up with the notch. Okay, so before we replace the carburetors, we're going to reattach those throttle cables. It's a lot easier when you can get to both sides of the carburetor. So, uh, first of all, we're going to lift them out and um, reattach them. Um, to attach one of them you might have to attach a little clamp to hold the spring back, uh, the return spring, so that you can use both hands to feed the cable down and hook it into the little notch. So you can see here I've got a set of vice grips just holding the, the spring back while I put that cable on. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, put the carburetors back on. It's a good idea to put a little bit of lubricant in those rubbers first, just to help them slide in easier. And they should push in, and you f should feel a definite bit of resistance when they're in correctly. They sort of pop. If you feel anything behind there, just pull it back out again and have a look, because it's easy to get something caught, like a hose or a, a wire, and it'll prevent them going in. So before you replace the air box, put the choke cable back on and the throttle position sensor plug. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below.